Hi, I'm Brian, and today we'll be discussing the ACCA paper P5, March June 2017, past year paper. We'll be looking at requirement B from question 2 of the paper. And let's take a look at the question, which is over here. Um, the first thing we're going to look at in detail is the action verb. In this scenario, they're using the verb advice. Advice is quite a high-level skill. Not only do you need to know your topic, you will need to analyze the data given to you in the question, and you need to make a conclusion to your client, or in this case the examiner, on how this topic might be useful in um, solving the problems faced by your organization. Now the topic that which we are going to con cover today is target costing. Now in my earlier video, we've already discussed uh, or revised some of the basic elements of target costing. And we've talked about having a P5 framework with which we can approach this question. You can see my framework, which is over here. And you would like to know how we came across this framework. You can click the card on the top right of your screen. This will bring you back to part one of the videos which answer this question and where I discuss um, target costing in a little bit more detail as a revision. So if we come back to the question, we are going to focus on the achievement of Pit Lane's financial performance objective. Okay, now the purpose of this second video is that we will be going through the question data and we'll be trying to pick out items inside which are relevant for our answer. So we're not going to answer the question per se yet, but we're just going to continue to shape our thought process and see what is relevant from the question. Okay. So we're going to go from top to bottom. And first of all, we can see from paragraph one, uh, interesting line. I've said that pit lane appears to have production inefficiencies, and that appears over here. The factory's layout is poorly designed, and the production process requires components to be transported around and between factories. Now, why is this relevant to target costing? It will probably be relevant when we are trying to close the cost gap. Because when you see poorly designed and things like that, they incur costs without adding value. The next thing we can identify is pit lane has little experience in developing new products and estimating costs and revenues. We will find this over here. So pit lane has very little experience in developing new products and estimating costs and revenues. So why is this relevant to target costing? As a consultant, now that we know that pit lane is very new to this, we are going to have professional skepticism to whatever figures or plans they present to us. We're not going to take them at face value. We're going to critically analyze them for their reliability. Okay. The project which uh, pit lane is embarking on, which is this booster project, appears to have limited life cycle. This is due to, first of all, competition. This is stated over here. There are many product, uh, many competitive competitor products which will be launched during the scheme. And because of this, demand is expected to fall greatly and production will discontinue. So within this limited lifespan, we need to pay very careful attention to the prices, which they are going to deteriorate, as we've already calculated from part A. They're going to deteriorate and somehow we need to hit our 15% net profit margin even with these deteriorating prices. Also, there's a potential expiry of subsidies and you can find this in paragraph two over here. You're off offering a time limited subsidy and we're not sure if this subsidy will be renewed. It may not be renewed. So that's a risk which um, pit lane is going to take. Now, pit lane's selling strategy. Pit lane will be selling to installers rather than consumers. So we find this in paragraph three as well. Booster will be sold to installers rather than that and not directly to consumers. So we need to pay very careful attention. We have two layers of customers here. We not only have to make our final end customer happy, but we also need to make our immediate customer, the intermediary happy, which in this case is the installers of solar panels. And so there is a potential for value disconnect when we design our product. So when we apply the target constant principle, 
we need to keep in mind who is the customer that we are trying to focus on. Okay, the next item is pit lane uh, marketing data, the selling price and things like that, is based on emulating a scheme from another country. And we find this over here. Pit lane um, market data for the duration of the scheme is based on a similar scheme in VLAN. Now, remember earlier we talked about pit lane having very little experience in developing products, so they decided to just port over the data from VLAN. We need to take this with a pinch of salt. You cannot assume that the data you see from VLAN would be applicable to DLAN, which is the country which pit lane is operating in. So we need to question that in our answer. Pit Lane plans to commit $2.8 million to develop a smartphone app which communicates to consumers. You will find this piece of data over, he over here. $2.8 million upfront development costs to enable Booster to communicate to consumers' smartphones. Now remember that Pit Lane's direct customer or immediate customer is not the end user, but in fact is an installer of solar panels. Um, so it's questionable whether this might add value to your customers and whether they'd be willing to pay for it. Pit Lane plans to use highest quality packaging. This is a cost issue. Now when it comes to target costing, we need to um, satisfy the market. And when we're using high quality packaging, that increases our costs. And we are not sure whether the market would actually pay more for such high quality Packaging. Remember, we're selling to installers, not to end users. The value of the app is doubtful, as most residents of D-Land don't own smartphones. And this is identified over here. So if they don't own smartphones, well, then there's no point having an app. So we need to question that in our answer. Subcomponents are bought in bulk from different suppliers. This is in paragraph 6 which you will find over here. Um, there are four main subcomponents and they are bought in-house from DLAN, although they are readily available from suppliers worldwide. So again, applying this to target costing, this is a, a matter of closing the cost gap. We Instead of thinking locally, we might, be, we might be able to save money by thinking globally. We might find low cost and e effective and efficient suppliers, not just in DLAN, but probably anywhere around the globe. So more research has to be done by pit lane in order to streamline their supply chain. Damage to fragile components by workers leading to pit lane hiring labor. You will find this over here. Many subcomponents were damaged when they tried to do some prototypes. And because of that, what's going to happen is pit lane is now going to hire more skilled workers and paying them 30% more. As a consultant, you might want to think out of the box and question that 30% whether you really need to pay so much money or maybe you need to change your training systems so that your workers can um, do the job and you don't need to pay them so much. Or you might even consider automation where robots will assemble your product for you. So that's something we might want to talk about when we're trying to close the cost gap. Okay, and finally... Pit lane staff is not encouraged to provide input to improve the production process. They are not really using the skills and knowledge of their workers over here. So when we are doing value engineering in the future, when we're trying to answer this question, we might want to consider inquiring about what these staff have to say to improve the process and help us close the cost gap. Okay, so that's the end of this video. The next video we're going to do is we're going to answer the question and we're going to talk about each of these items which we have identified and we will write of an acceptable exam answer. Okay, please feel free to watch any other videos in my playlist. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much and good luck with your exams.